probably in about February of that year, his mother got very ill. She lived by herself in Florida, in Orlando, uh, or Winter Park. Jack grew up in, in uh, Orlando, and his father had been killed in an accident at an early age, and he was the only child. So she called me and said she was in the hospital having surgery the next day, and they had the doctors had asked the Red Cross to bring Jack home. Well, I knew that it had to have been something very serious or they would not bring him back. So I called my parents and they were on standby to come and pick up my little boys. Jack called me from Alaska in the middle of the night one night and said, I'll come to Augusta and we'll ride down together. I said, no, I think you need to go into Florida because I don't know what shape your mother's in. So he told me later that when he got to Alaska, he had to change planes and he had to go outside. Now this was in February and he came from a tropical climate and he had on those short sleeve, um, I don't know, khakis, I guess you call them. They said, all right, soldiers, when you're getting ready to get off, take a deep breath of warm air and hold it and run in the building real quick. And that's what he did. <laughs> so anyway, um, the next day after he called, my parents came, picked up my little boys, and I drove down to Orlando, and we found out that his mother indeed had terminal pancreatic cancer. And so we had a visit with her for a couple of weeks, and then he went back to Augusta with me, visited some with the boys, and went back to Vietnam. Now, unfortunately for him, he missed the only combat jump of the war because he was home on emergency leave. Uh, General Dean told him later, he was aide to General John R. Dean at that time, General Dean told him, I knew that we were making that combat jump, Jack, but you needed to be with your mother. So he didn't tell him, so he'd go home. I don't know what Jack would have done if he'd had to make the decision. <laughs> I, I hesitate to think. <laughs>